I just want to talk about the importance of this doctrine because you know many people when they first hear this doctrine and they first hear about Jesus Christ going to hell it's a shock to them right it's a shock to them and they say how now how dare you how dare you say Jesus Christ went to hell how isn't it isn't that blasphemous isn't that you know how, how can you blaspheme against God and it's funny that you know if you remember watching that conversation between Stephen Anderson and James White James White made the same accusation right when they got onto the topic of Jesus Christ going to hell James White was just like how, how can you say that that's blasphemous um, but you know the, the funny thing is is that oh, I don't know if it's funny but you know the interesting thing is is it's actually the opposite because if Jesus Christ didn't go to hell I believe that's almost blasphemous because you're then saying that Jesus Christ did not fulfill the Old Testament covenant he didn't fulfill everything that the law required so he had to have gone to hell um, but you know why why is hell, why is this um, in, an important topic? You know wh why is it important that Christ fulfills all the law? It's important because it's required for us to be saved. Because if Jesus Christ did not fulfill every part of the law, then he wasn't a perfect savior. He didn't fulfill the law like he had to in order for us to be saved. And, and I just wanted to, before I get into this topic in particular, I just wanted to give you another example of something that doesn't seem so important, but is actually part of salvation. Because, you know, in order for Christ to be the savior, in order for him to die for our sins and be that perfect sacrifice, he had to accomplish certain things. Because some people will say, well, what's more important, the resurrection or the blood? Well, neither are more important they're both important because if you don't have either of them then we can't be saved because he had to fulfill the old testament law and it's the same with jesus christ going to hell and i just wanted to talk about quickly another example of this is you know the importance of the burial you know that the gospel is the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ and sometimes you'll think you know what's so important about the burial you know i can understand that the lamb had to be slain right and then he had to rise again because he had to you know be, be resurrected the third day and that gives us hope that we'll one day rise again but why why is the burial emphasized you know it's the death uh burial and resurrection well you know there's a couple of reasons why i think the the burial has significance and and number one here just in john 12 it says here and jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Um, let's just go here from, uh, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Bible here, this is like the resurrection chapter, but it says here in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 35, But some man will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. So number one, one significance of the burial is that it's, um, you know, it symbolizes a truth that's revealed in nature. So in nature, you know, a corn of wheat has to die and has to be buried in the ground, otherwise it can't uh, bring forth fruit. So Jesus almost fulfilled that you know, truth that we see in nature, that he, was, he died and then was buried so that he could rise again. Um, so that's number one. It symbolizes the truth revealed to us in nature. Number two, if we go uh, further up. Uh, this is one I heard. Because we remember here it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So another reason I've heard is the burial is important because it proves a bodily resurrection. Because the body died and then the body was buried because you can't bury the spirit, you can't bury the soul. And then the body rose again the third day because cults like the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in a bodily, physical resurrection, but we do. Because, you know, when Jesus came back, he ate with the disciples. He said, here, touch and feel. You know, a spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me to have. So... The burial is important there because it, it symbolizes or it, it proves to us that it was a bodily resurrection because the body was buried, the body rose again. So those are some significances there. But I think the most important thing um, about the resurrection, oh, sorry, about the burial, just go here. And, and what I'm sort of tying it in with why Jesus Christ had to go to hell 
is because it fulfilled the Old Testament law. I don't know if you've ever read this verse. There's only two verses in Deuteronomy. But just, just look at these two verses in Deuteronomy 21. It says, And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now, it's, it's interesting because I always worried, wondered what the importance of the burial was until, you know, because sometimes when you're reading through the Bible, you're sort of just like glancing over verses. And then I realized this verse was here. And then I realized that's why the burial is important. Because there's actually a law in the Old Testament that says if, you, if somebody is a curse of God, if somebody's worthy of death, right, worthy of capital punishment, and we know that Christ was not worthy of capital punishment, but he became sin for us, right? So that's why he was worthy of death, because he took on the sins of the world. And it says here, if this person is worthy of death and you hang him on a tree, meaning that, you know, he's, he's crucified, basically, you hang him up. And, and it's funny how, you know, some people will say, you know, the, um, it was the Romans that came up with crucifixion, you know, hanging people on a tree. I don't know if that's really true, because you see people getting hanged on a tree before the Romans. You know, so it just goes to show that sometimes history is not always the truth. We should always go to the Bible. Maybe it wasn't so much crucifixion, you know, because you know, you, you, they, they, they killed him and they hang him on a tree. So maybe, maybe they're right there in the sense that crucifixion is where you're suffering on this tree as opposed to maybe put to death and then hung up on a tree for shame's sake, right? But anyways, if, you, if you're put to death and you're hung up on a tree... The Bible says here that that day that person has to be buried, otherwise the land is still defiled for the sin that they've committed. So you can see here that if Jesus Christ was not buried, I don't believe the sins would have been taken away, right? Because that's one of the things that needed to happen in order for the plan of salvation to be complete. So even though it seems like a seemingly insignificant statement that the, the gospel is the death of burial and resurrection, everything is important. And just springboarding off that, this is why the doctrine of Jesus Christ going to hell um, is important. And, you know, even though a lot of people are shocked when they first hear this doctrine and they say, how can you say Jesus Christ went to hell? You know, my honest first reaction when I, when I learned about Jesus Christ going to hell, to me, it was, it was refreshing in the sense of I could never reconcile how a physical death and a physical suffering paid for an eternity of hell. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, 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 if we're going to say, if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the punishment for sin is an eternity of fire and brimstone and burning, yet Jesus Christ, in order to satisfy that judgment, just died, suffered physically and died physically? To me, that never made sense. So then when I learned, oh, no, wait, Jesus Christ's soul actually went to hell and burned and suffered for our sins, then it was like, ah, that, that sort of reconciled that, that fantasy in my own mind. Not that my, my own judgments you know, matter, but to me it just was refreshed because that made sense to me and said, hey, great, you know, that made sense that you know, the punishment is this and the punishment was paid with something that was equal to it as opposed to something that seemed in my own mind not as, um, as, as uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for, like intense? Uh. That's not the word. Severe. Not as severe. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so, you know, if the punishment for sins is hell, wouldn't it make sense for Christ to go there in order to be our substitute and fulfill the law? Now, another question that came up before I go into um, the points that I have here. You know, Kevin and I were discussing. Now, did, did Jesus Christ, because some people debate this question. Did Jesus Christ go to hell to suffer for our sins, you know, to suffer and be punished? Or did he just go to hell to um, take ownership of hell, you know, to get the keys of death and of hell? So he didn't actually uh, go there to burn and to suffer. He did go to hell. That's why we have those verses in the Bible. This is the argument. He did go to hell, but it was a bit like, um, you know, uh, the fiery furnace in the book of Daniel. Like he was there, but they weren't being burnt. And he was just there to preach to the spirits in prison um, and to take the keys of death and of hell. Now, my, my, my position is, you know, I, I believe he did burn and he did suffer 
and I'll, I'll explain why I believe that as opposed to him just going there just to, to preach to the spirits in prison and take the keys um, as we go through um, these points.